Should you be a captive agent or a non-captive one? Hi, I'm Diogo Marquez, your friend in sales. And in today's video, we're going to cover which route to take. Before you get started, make sure you subscribe and click that bell notification below so you can get notified every time that I make new videos like this. So should you be a captive agent or a non-captive one? There are people that have chosen both routes and both have done well. I don't like the idea of someone being captive to only one supplier. The reason being is that you can't help the client in the best way possible. If you are a price shopper, if that's your business model and that's fine, so you essentially are looking for best quotes for your client. If you only have one carrier, you're screwed because they will either send you a quote that is final or will tell you something like, I'm not interested in doing this type of business. So you will lose a lot of business because you are essentially pretty much stuck to only one carrier. Whereas if you have a bunch of carriers, essentially you go price shopping, so you can help your client in the best way. You say, listen, these are the, all the carriers quotes, so just choose one. We'll, <laughs> it's fine by me, I get paid by either one. So for me, it's fine, just choose the best one. And the clients will start to trust you because they'll see you as someone that is going doing some price shopping for them and not something like, this is the only thing that I have regarding whatever you have, right? Because sometimes you'll see that the price, does, you really, you don't have any choice really with the company because they, they close, they know that you are captive. They don't give a shit because they have a bunch of agents. So essentially like they lose one business and eh, that's fine, we get another one, right? Whereas if you have a bunch of carriers, you won't lose the business because you are sending a bunch of quotes to the client. Regarding being captive, I have seen people doing very well just staying with one company. The reason being is that they are focusing only on one product and this makes the whole difference. Let's say someone is doing just life insurance, right? It really doesn't matter because the prices are not that, there's not that big disparity. So if you're doing life insurance, just focusing, let's say on whole life, on term life, on universal life, doing life products, it's a different, different ballpark because now you are focusing on a specific niche, you are learning more about that specific niche and you are addressing your customers in a way, it's not like we are doing some price shopping for you, you are addressing a specific need that they have. Now, when you are doing this, and I've seen people that stayed with companies like 30, 40 and 50 years, just doing like life insurance, so this works. So it's just a matter of how you are positioning yourself regarding to the market and then you use that and see the best approach to serve the market. It's not about the insurance company, it's always about the client. You couldn't care less and you shouldn't about the company's concerns because it's the client that pays. All those bean counters that are there saying you should do this, you should do that, you have to sell this and you have to sell that when the model that you are like captive right? It doesn't work. It only works if you just focus on one product, right? If they have a problem with that, well, find another insurance company. You need to understand that the way for you to move forward is choosing the best path for you. And the best path is, might be different for you than it is for me. I started out as a captive agent. I didn't like the idea because they wanted to sell a bunch of products and I didn't like that because I, I had spoken before with billionaires and millionaires and all of them, bar none, told me that successful people are focused. And you'll see that in Ben Feldman, Joe Gandolfo, Peter Rosengard, all of them did just sold life insurance. So you have to look at what you are doing and see the best model that fits for you. If you are a price shopper and that's fine, the best route to go is non-exclusive agent and then become an insurance broker. That way you essentially are doing some price shopping for your clients. You are helping them because you are reducing the overall overhead that they are having in, when they are paying insurance premiums. That's fine. 
The other way is being, if you want to choose being captive, you just focus on one product. And that's the way for you to move forward because you are focusing on life insurance if this is the case. And when you are doing this, if the client asks you for a different product, you can refer someone that does that. And they will be grateful because you are sending them business. You are saying, I just do life insurance. It's the reciprocity thing that starts kicking in. At some point, the other girl or guy are going to think about you because they are going to say, this guy sent me business because he just do, does life insurance, right? This is something that you need to address. Remember, it sounds counterintuitive, but people that are at MDRT, people like Ben Feldman, Joe Gandolfo, Peter Rosengard, they only sold life insurance. Some of them sold billions with a V, right? So they knew what worked and they kept doing it. They didn't go like all over the place selling everything to everybody. You can't be everything to everybody. It just doesn't work like that. You need to be a specialist. Remember like a heart surgeon or a brain surgeon, they make way more money than a general practitioner because they are focusing their efforts on iteration, learning more and more and more and more about a specific thing. And when you reach someone and you are using your weapon of choice, right? You have so many iterations regarding the product that you are selling. You have so much knowledge regarding what you have that you are going to address them in some way. You are going to use, let's say, life insurance as a cloth. Let's say it's a tax shelter or if it's using like to help their families or it's like a group insurance. You, you are using several variations of the same product to help them right? It's, it's not less effective than you are going, like say, I do everything for you. I'm just reducing price. Either way works. You just have to figure out the way that works best for you. I have chosen life insurance because I think it's the model that makes more sense for me. It didn't make sense in the beginning because I, I looked at, wait, this is way too focused. How am I going to sell this? But when I started looking at biographies of very successful people, they only sold one product. So it works, you just haven't like found a way, but they have been doing that for like 50 years plus, right? So, so it works, you just have to adjust, adjust what you are doing in accordance to a benchmark that is working. So in summary, you can do either way, you can choose to be a captive or non-captive agent, or actually you can even choose one product and be non-captive, you can do that as well. There are stories of Ben Feldman that when he, were, when he was writing larger policies, the company that he was with, New York Life, they didn't want to do it. So we went to with another company, right? So you have two choices and <laughs> pretty much is obvious that being captive is the worst one that you can be at. Because if you are choosing to stay with one product and if they don't want it, you're screwed, right? If you stay with one product and the company is fine with just that one product, but then you bring in a policy that they want to do, you will lose business. So if you are non-captive, that means you can bring that business to another company. So I hope this clarifies this issue. This is a big one. Remember that you are the one that is doing door knocking. You are the one that is bringing business. You are the one that is more important. You are the main person. You are the hero. You are the one that is bringing business. All those idiots, they are working at the insurance companies, at banks or whatever the case might be. They are just sitting there waiting for you to bring business. The more you do it, you have to look at yourself as you have a business. You are in a position of power. The only thing that you have to focus on is bringing in business. And the way for you to be optimized is not being captive with one agency, because if either if you choose like the price shopping model, that's fine. You need to have more companies so you can do some comparison. Or if you even choose to do one product, the best way is still to not be captive because you can bring that business to another company if the company that you were working with don't want to do the business. So either way, look at it like you are the main key person, you are a hero, economies are made of people, people like you that are bringing in business. People have money because you do sales, right? So all those idiots, all those bean counters and all those actuaries and all those idiots that just study math and stay behind an Excel spreadsheet, their value is almost none 
because there's no R&D, there's no human resources, there's no operations of any kind unless money comes in. And money only comes in because you do some door knocking. You are doing something that 99.999% of the population don't do. So you have to put yourself in a position of power. And for you, for, for you to do that, the best way is being non-captive and you have a way of ensuring that with a high degree of probability, you are bringing in more business and closing it because you are not captive. You can bring that business to another carrier if for some reason the, the company that you are working with doesn't want to do it. And that's it for today. Remember to subscribe and click that bell notification below so you can get notified every time that I make new videos like this. Peace. Whoa.